Hello everybody and welcome to Unit 4 Biology Area Study 1. Today we are looking at disease challenges and strategies. So we'll be looking at the emergence of new pathogens and re-emergence of known pathogens in a globally connected world. We'll be looking at strategies that identify and control the spread of pathogens. We'll be looking at vaccination programs and we'll be looking at immunotherapy strategies. So looking at impact of being globally connected, we know that it is an easy way to spread disease. We can see that with what happened with good old COVID, um, the fact that we as humans are able to travel all around the world, we are social beings, is obviously going to have an impact. So there are a range of factors that can contribute to pathogens' ability to enter the human population and spread between us. Um, we can sort of link it back even to the 18th century where Europeans arriving to Australia brought with them a number of diseases that spread quickly um, throughout the non-immune Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander populations, um, and it did in impact a lot of people. So there are a few factors that do contribute to Australia's Indigenous population being susceptible to disease, and that is the lack of immunity in the population. There is also the lack of knowledge and experience with European diseases and disruptions that had been caused by colonisation. So in terms of looking at um, contributing factors to the emergence and re-emergence of disease, we know that there is evolution of these organisms, okay? Um, they can evolve to infect humans um, and involve, you know, evolve to evade any of like the immune treatments that we, we have and they can acquire resistance as well. Um, Globalisation and travel, our ability to quickly move around the world, um, diseases that may have otherwise remained localised are now able to spread. Um, there is increased exposure of humans to animals as well. So as the human population grows, um, humans are more likely to come in contact with animals as well. Um, increasing the human population, so larger populations will lead to more dense environments. Um, so this may also increase the likelihood of disease spreading as well in causing um, large scale problems for a population. Um, our changes in technology could also be a factor. So sometimes new tech could be responsible for the emergence or re-emergence of a disease. Um, something like Legionnaire's disease is caused by a pathogen that inhibits air conditioning systems. Um, and insufficient vaccination across populations. So previously managed diseases might be able to re-emerge as well um, as the vaccinated might decrease as well. So it might stem from the loss of herd immunity, which we'll touch on a little bit later. In terms of controlling the spread of pathogens, this can be done a number of ways, but first we need to be able to identify the pathogen. So we have a few different methods. We have physical, immunological and molecular methods of identifying pathogens where we can visualise the pathogen themselves. We can undergo some biochemical testing. We can use what we call ELISA, so enzyme-linked immunosorbent assays, um, where they might anchor the antigens from a pathogen and add some blood. And if the patient has been exposed, they'll have antibodies that will then bind with those antigens. So they can visualise the binding of those antibodies to antigens. Um, molecular, so they might do some hybridization based detection, they might do some PCR, and they might do some whole genome sequencing as well. In terms of controlling the spread, okay, a lot of it is going to be based on prevention, so sanitation, vaccination, um, we're going to have screening processes in place, quarantining, isolating, identifying the pathogen, identifying and controlling the mode of transmission of that pathogen, and then of course treating those individuals. In terms of transmission, um, the things that we need to be aware of is the different transmission routes that pathogens may take. So airborne um, and droplet transmission, so through sneezing or coughing or talking, um, the fecal oral route, so contaminated feces, someone goes to the toilet, don't wash their hands, that kind of thing. Bodily fluids um, as well from infected individuals if you come in contact with their mucus or their blood. Um, direct contact, so things like head lice or chicken pox, they're spread directly with skin-to-skin -skin contact. 
um, or we call a vector. So a vector is something that might um, carry disease. So things like mosquitoes spreading malaria, that kind of thing. So it's really important that we control the spread and we have to think of ways that we can identify to make sure that all of this is taken into account. In terms of controlling um, transmission, like I said, I think we mentioned it earlier on this slide, just at the bottom, strategies in controlling disease transmission, but this is our disease management. So we need to make sure that we're taking steps to prevent disease from emerging at all. Okay, so that might be improving hygiene practices, sanitizing, washing hands, sterilizing surfaces, um, vaccination, those kind of things. Um, ongoing surveillance, so making sure that governments are keeping tabs on medications that might be increasing in a particular area might show that there might be a prevalence of a certain symptom or illness in a particular area, so keeping an eye on that, um, ensuring that there's quarantine and isolation for, um, for people that are for ill, um, and we could see this when we had the mass pandemic in 2020, 2021 and coming into 2022 as well we've had to be really careful identification of the pathogen so using those methods scientists can identify the pathogen and if we know what is making people sick it might give us some guidance in how to manage that as well um, and control that method of spread um, and then treatment so if we can't prevent people get it so and such we then have to look at treatment, so medications, antibiotics, antivirals that might target that pathogen specifically. In terms of vaccination, I feel like we're all quite familiar with this process now, um, but all vaccines basically stimulate the immune response to create antibodies. And we know how important antibodies can be and that there's a lot of specificity involved. So the creation of memory cells um, is very necessary. So those B cells and those memory cells, really, really important. Vaccines we know are basically inactivated, virtually dead virus um, or an attenuated virus um, that can't cause disease as well. And we have vaccination programs in place. So we know that if a second or third booster is required, that's to increase the immune response so that every time um, the antibodies are created faster and a larger response is going to be created. And we know that herd immunity refers to when 95% plus of the population is immunised. So it's enough people in a population to be vaccinated so that everybody is protected, even those people that can't be vaccinated for whatever reason. The final part that we're going to look at um, in this sort of topic is monoclonal antibodies and they're antibodies that are specifically made in a lab um, and they're made specifically. So to work they basically could put a radioactive substance on antibodies, they might identify proteins on cancer cells, um, they might attach toxins to antibodies, targeting specific Fazar receptors, um, making antibodies with antigens that are non-self to stick to specific cancer cells, and damaged blood vessels leading to a tumour. So they're immunotherapies that are using medical intervention um, that can act to either amplify that immune response, okay? So they're artificially made to target a specific antigen. We've got some diagrams here that can show that as well, so how they are um, produced, okay? So antigens only present on cancer cells, we will think about vaccinations, extracting those B cells that are then formed, um, fusing those together, and we are selecting appropriate um, hybridoma and then collecting those antibodies as well. If you do have any questions regarding anything to do with acquiring immunity, please do leave them in the comments below um, and I'm happy to answer them. Have a great day.